Your favorite couples here so easily accessible Grab your headphones, hit play, turn up the decibels Massive with the pod like a young Skywalker Shout out to homie Yoda cause great all we talkers The crew is firm so it's love to AZ You sign the Tempe, scores a competition simply Sure to get you high like some true West Coasters Look at the flick of the wrist, one guard named Leviosa LA is always sunny, come a kind with honeys Pokemon and Dunny, sneak a hype, be sticking money And Rachel rolls her eyes and see Lee made it funny Time flies and now my flux capacitor is running You not rocking with us, you like a muggle wizard, see Just stupefy yourself with the wave of wizardry Like Mario standing still in the left's a moving screen A world full of nerds, but only two nerdly Who are we? The dopest show you ever heard, just see And we'll be Ain't the drum like an infectious beat We complete They like when the short and long hit me Cause we The nerdies The, the nerdly Who are we? The dopest show you ever heard, just see And we'll be Ain't the drum like an infectious beat We complete They like when the short and long hit me Cause we The nerdies The, the nerdly <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Nerdlies. I am Chris. I am Rachel. Hi everybody. How are you doing today? Hello. Um well, it is 2020 end of January. I almost said July. That would have been <laughs> awful. <laughs> what a fucking year already January 2020 has been. Mm-hmm. And we'll obviously get to some of that later. Um but yeah, how's everything been, Rachel? Good. Good, good start. I have, I have new hair. <laughs> as Yay! always, as always. Yeah, as if this was a new, a new concept. Yeah. Yes, I have new hair. Like How I do you like every it? Every two months. How do you like it so I, far? I like it. I'm, I, I'm kind of kicking myself as I usually do when I make bad hair decisions, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I. I got bored and I dyed my hair black, which I shouldn't have done because I, and I knew it. I shouldn't have done it because I was like, I know I'm going to hate. I'm not going to, not that I'm going to hate it, but I'm going to want to change it in two months. And it's like the hardest thing to change yeah. is black because you have to strip it and strip it and strip oh, it boy. and strip it. And like the life of a hair to dyer get it, to get it, <laughs> to get it off. Um, so now my hair is, it is red. It is very red, but it also very damaged because I had to have it bleached twice. <laughs> Boo. And um, yeah, and even after getting it cut, it's still not in great shape. So I've been like, I've, I'm kind of sad because I want to be showing it off, but I've been putting it up because I've been like putting a shit ton of conditioner in it, <laughs> and then being like, I'm not touching it with any heat or anything. <laughs> yeah. So fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You gotta take care of it. You gotta take care of that mop. But, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very protective of my little square foot of hair that I have on the top of my head now. <laughs> But that's why I'm trying to grow it out, because I want it to be long. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Be a good contrast. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Um, But yeah, so uh, what have we got going on? Uh, Not too much. Next month, uh, we're hoping, we're hoping to be getting to go on the ride soon. The newest Star Wars ride. Um, We've been hearing a ton about it. We watched some ride throughs. We're very excited to see it. Oh Hopefully, God. we get it. I, so I don't want to. I don't want to get too crazy because <laughs> I don't want to be too disappointed if we don't somehow. Because it is kind of tough to get in because you have to get there early, get there for rope drop, get your shit set up, and then just hit the button as soon as mm-hmm. the park opens. Well, so, we just got to be strategic, and all of us need to like make sure we have yeah. the app the night before and like. Yeah, everyone Enter has to all our in. stuff in. Yeah, yeah so it's well, just we just like, have boom, to scan boom, our boom. passes when we get in, click that thing, and we're good. I saw Alan, our friend Alan Wasserman, uh, got in. He got like number seven. Yeah, I mean, like, if you yeah. sometimes you just luck out. Yeah. Um, one of our my friends got number fifty, and they were able to do the ride, and they they only guarantee up to like group seventy or so, and they did. They were in our group fifty, and they got on at like one or two in the, two in the afternoon. Okay. Which was pretty good because nice. sometimes, like, obviously, it's a new ride, new technology. It breaks down quite a bit, mm. so um, it, it, it they can only guarantee a certain amount of groups because there's just you got to be lead time for if the ride breaks down. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that there there was one day I guess somebody was saying that they got to group like one eleven or one fifteen, so they got through a ton of people if mm-hmm. the ride just stays stable. So it just depends on the day. So hopefully, hopefully, cross your fingers mm-hmm. for us that we will be able to get it on the ride soon. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to see it. I just want to see 
<laughs> see it in person because we obviously watched the ride through. Um, I don't know if we talked about this before, but we watched the ride through because obviously Rachel knows herself <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and she needed to see it first to know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was already an incredible experience just to watch it on uh, yeah. on a big screen. So can't imagine what's going to be I like. I nearly shot myself. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, it's just it's so surreal. It really is. It's just like everything I would have ever dreamed of as a kid that a yeah. ride could be is now a thing. And like, it's insane to me. Like, it's insane to me that there's like big kid dark rides now. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. like. Like, you get, like, the thrill of a roller coaster mixed with a dark ride, mixed with, like, like serious thrill ride shit. Like, it's pretty fucking awesome. Like, it really, like to me, it really is, like, a big kid dark ride. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I it, love it. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Because it's fucking Star Wars, man. Like, yeah. yeah like, so, yeah, it's fucking, it's so fucking cool. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I'm very, very excited to see the ride. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, since we're on the Star Wars tip right now, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know other people will be, <laughs> think I'm dumb for saying on the Star Wars tip, <laughs> like it's super cool. Uh, <laughs> but we, since we're on the Star Wars topic, uh, I right. did want to talk about the, <laughs> oh my God. I did want to talk about, um, obviously, there's a ton of news about Rise of Skywalker, like at, in the aftermath of how people reacted to it. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone, you know, it's just it's tough to make movies right now. <laughs> like people are going to pick it apart no matter what, especially if it's a big enterprise, and we do it too because that's you know that's us as fans. Um, but there were some images that came out and plot details for originally the movies were supposed to be J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson. Colin Trevorrow uh, for the three movies of this sequel trilogy. Um, Colin Trevorrow got fired for creative differences and also just questionable movie decisions, I think, Mm -hmm. in general for him. Um, But we did recently get somebody either leaked it or put out the concept art for Colin Trevorrow's version of the third movie, which also included some of the plot details of what he was going to do. Um, which I was kind of surprised by. What did you think about? I and mean, the big thing was it's good. It was going to be called Star Wars: Duel of the Fates. Mm-hmm. Now I would say that's a pretty good title, but then again, personally, I'm like, well, that's already a title of a song, so why would you make it the title of a m- whole movie? Yeah, and the title of the song is really pertaining to that particular like fight. Yeah, between Obi Wan and and. Uh... Qui-Gon Maul. and Maul. Yeah, or Qui-Gon and Maul, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just, like... It's, the, I mean, it's a good... <laughs> it's an interesting callback, but yeah. I'm like, would I have bought that as the as the movie title either? I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but one of the bigger things, too, was that the concept art uh, is actually pretty, pretty incredible. Um, the big thing that Rachel liked... I think, and I I like it too. Is the Ray's outfit um, in Duel of the Fates was going to be an homage to the Return of the Jedi Luke outfit, but she would all was also going to get a dual lightsaber, which is one thing. If you've listened to the other episode, is one thing I wanted her to have, like since the first movie. Yeah, <laughs> I really wanted her to get that. So that would have placated me a little bit. Um, but generally, what do you what did you think of like the concept art and the changes that he would have made, or the things that he would have done with the movie? Did you read the script? I didn't read the whole not, like not I not read the, the script, s- but the, the plot synopsis? details. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, like there was there was stuff that I liked. I I really would have hated. Um, I think I would have hated. Uh, Poe and Ray romance with yeah. way more than way more than like being sad that like she didn't get with uh, Finn. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, or like that really would yeah. If it would have that would have been I would have been like nope. I'm like, <laughs> I would have been so mad. I would have that would have so really come out of left mad. field. Like what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> like 
It's like it's like yelling in the face of fans. Like you don't get Raylo, you don't get Finn and Poe, you get nothing. <laughs> you, good day, sir. Good day, sir. Smack like people would have been. <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, been at least really, really you weird. kind of got Raylo, but not really, which yeah. I didn't want really at all. But that's. <laughs> I really like. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so fucking mad. Still, I wanted fucking Finn and Ray. Finn yeah, and Ray so bad. I but it so yeah, bad. that oh. that's the thing. I think that you know, generally, I thought the reactions were interesting because, I mean, obviously, everyone not everyone, but some people had problems with Rise of Skywalker. We had little yeah. problems. I still think it's an enjoyable movie. I'll watch it again, just like I watch every Star Wars movie. I am still gonna be very happy when I watch it, but I just think that there was little things. Like, uh, me and you kind of agree, there's little things that we would have changed. And that's with any of these movies, I think. Uh, But (laughs) the biggest thing for me, and we were talking about this when we first read it, was like, okay, cool. Some of the story beats are cool. Some of the art is really, really pretty. But do you really think that Colin Trevorrow would have executed this movie that much better than J.J. would have? I don't think so (laughs) i don't know that i would have trusted him as a filmmaker like obviously we'll never know we'll literally never know because he didn't get his keep to get to keep his job Mm -hmm. he didn't get to do the movie but we'll literally never know whether that would have translated on screen as well as as it is on paper because i'm sure rise of skywalker on paper looked pretty darn good too yeah. Like uh, and all the like plot details looked pretty good on paper, but it's mm-hmm. like just the execution of it. Yeah. So, uh, if, for me, the reaction to, to be like, "Oh yeah, we should have gotten this movie. This would have been so much better." Ah, pull back on that a little bit. Yeah, this, like I said, it's it. it the there were cool. there were parts that were better, but not as a whole. I don't think. Yeah, it was better. Like I love the artwork. I yeah. think the artwork is fantastic. I thought the you know intriguing stuff with. Um, her training and then the obviously the homage to a new hope with leia and bb8 and stuff like that um i don't know whether i would have liked to see vader again like there's a concept art of uh, kylo going into uh, uh, the forest or whatever thing and him fighting vader as part of his fears oh, okay. and stuff like that which is i guess it would make sense with his neurosis and stuff like that but mm-hmm. it's just kind of weird i don't think i would want to see to actually see Vader again yeah. in the sequel trilogy. That would have felt like, just as much as I didn't really need Palpatine, like, I didn't need to see Vader again. Yeah. <laughs> like, in a full body, like, whatever mm-hmm. sense. Um, but yeah, I you know, it's it's concept stuff. It's stuff that, you know, it's, it's another alternate universe where we may have gotten this film, but yeah. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> Um, one thing I do have to say is like at least I think that's one thing that I love about cosplay is that like when there's cool like artwork like that yeah, like we yeah. can actually be like hold my beer I'm gonna make that happen like you know so that's like in a way it's like bringing it to life yeah yeah I think it's for fans no. and for people who like no, the design no. of oh my god no absolutely not <laughs> Oh, uh, that's not gonna fly. The cat was you, about to jump up on top of our not, display cases. You are not gonna do that shit. Anyway, when I'm sorry. sitting here right now. So if you guys no. have a no. a scoreboard of when the cats <laughs> were gonna bother us during the show, uh, it's this mark of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, uh, bingo. Card if you had a bingo full. card or like a drink you needed to down during yeah. that, yeah, that, that that's the part. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing. Um, but yeah, like I think that's the awesome thing about, about, yeah, you said about cosplay that you have all this fan art and stuff like that and concept art that you could just, if you like it, you can just do it. Yeah. Yeah, and that, I'm, I'm excited I'm to see. I'm probably going to do the, um, the, the Ben Solo. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Looking more like Han, like Han. thing. I'm, yeah. I'm going to make that happen. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Um, but I think that, you know, that's, that stuff is what I like about the concept art. Cause then you can go back and people will latch on to certain things and you get to see it in person. And I, I so excited to, for Star Wars Celebration because that's going to be so much fun to see everybody get together and like mm-hmm. 
do all that. I I do think it's funny too because I just we just joined TikTok. If you want to follow us on TikTok, we haven't really done anything with it yet, but we have a username on there, the Nerdly. So if you want to follow us, go ahead and do that. But for a time after the movie uh, came out, like TikTok has been overrun by Star Wars memes, and I am just so delighted <laughs> that that is the thing. Like even like traditional like tiktok accounts have been doing star wars meme stuff and it's just so fantastic (laughs) i love that the community can at least come together and do that and like provide some fun and like funny content Mm -hmm. (laughs) on that platform for it um what were you looking up damn son sorry i started looking (laughs) looking up she's already looking up cosplay pieces right now (laughs) that's that's what she's doing While I am That's vamping, what I've been doing all day. I'm sorry. While I've been vamping, Rachel has been staring at her phone, looking at cosplay pieces. So just so you know, if that was on your bingo card, where Chris, where Chris, Jesus. where Chris suspiciously talks for too long, that is uh, that is the part. That's the part that you need. That's the square you need to scratch off right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you okay oh are you okay i'm sorry it's fine it's fine it's fine uh but yeah so you you want to do that that cosplay which yes, i think is I do. we have a couple of pieces already mm-hmm. for it um you'd also like you we were talking to other people you have also have another plan that you want to mm-hmm. do which is Xion. yeah which is weird because like I for, I'd forgotten what her character's name was because I'd only watched the episode once and people's names just kind of go Foo, with me most of the time. Um, but yeah, her name is Xi'an, but it's like almost like the Chinese or like uh, you yeah, know, whatever, yeah. like XI mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. Is, is like that kind of sound. Um, but yeah, it's Xi'an and uh, I want to do her costume really bad. And Chris ended up finding me some head tails. Yeah. Which I'm super, 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 super stoked about because I've been in, wanting hopefully, to tomorrow. do a, like a Twi'lek forever, forever and ever and ever. And yeah, so I'm super excited for that. And I'm just, I'm worried about certain details not looking right if I try to do them myself, but I think I'm going to try to do everything myself. Yeah, nice. Or with Chris helping me. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, too, about, uh, like, the Xion's, like, costume is, like, it's actually really, like, I had to take a lot of screenshots of, like, the episode, like, with my phone. Yeah. Um, to try to get close-ups of certain items and stuff. It's actually a really simple, simple <clears throat> costume um, that they did for her. And one thing I was realizing is that she has, because, like, every, like, Twi'lek has, like, their own, like, the differentiation in how they wear their like headpiece, I guess. Uh-huh. Like it's just a. I guess that's part of their culture is they wear these like little headbands that go over the top mm-hmm. of their head. Mm-hmm. Which really, I think it was just because that was the only way they could attach these weird looking ears yeah. to the sides <laughs> of the thing. They were like, "How are we gonna make this look normal? It's just gonna be like on the sides. We don't want to put prosthetics on there. Let's just put a headband." Yeah, on. yeah. To me, that's probably what it was. Um, but I was no- I was just now realizing that like almost every. Twi'lek has the little ears on the sides, Mm -hmm. but um, you don't see hers because of the way it comes down and around her chin. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was realizing, I'm like, I'm going to have these ears. I mean, I'll just keep them probably, but I don't even need them because you don't see them on her costume because she kind of has like what Hera had, where she has like an actual strap Mm -hmm. that goes under Mm -hmm. her chin because most of them just have this like kind of like a headband that goes like just around the back of their head, but hers goes under her chin. Oh, interesting. So it's, yeah. So I think I, like, almost wonder if they have, like, almost looks like they have, like, earmuffs underneath them or something. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. weird. But, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> well. And she has a dagger that I'm probably going to make out of Warbler. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because then you can actually take it in and not be stabbing people with it. Well, yeah. Well, and I think what would be cool is I want to, like, because in, in the episode she's balancing it on her finger. Yeah. And I want to, like. Get Try them. to do that shot. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> I mean, even if we have to rig it with, like, some string, I want to I'm sure do that, that you could figure out how to balance it. I I'm sure so. you can. If I, like I said, if I make the, you know, with Warble and everything well enough, it should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so, uh, as we <laughs> transitioned from Star Wars, I did want to talk about Star Trek. And we would be remiss to talk about Star Trek without calling our good friend, Brian Bergen. Welcome in our special guest. I can't remember what number this is of your you appearing on the show, but our friend. No, but I'm always happy to be here when uh, given the opportunity. Our so, friend yeah. Brian, uh, Brian Bergen. Thank you very much for coming on. We wanted to yes. have you on because uh, Rachel has gotten to watch the Picard show. I have not really watched it yet. She, she, she uh, did tell me a couple of the story beats. But I did want to have you guys have the conversation of what you guys thought of the first episode of Picard. So is this a spoiler free or a spoiler failed discussion? Uh, let's yeah. let's go first things first thing the first impression, no no spoilers. No spoilers, okay. For like first, first impression, yeah. Go ahead, Bert. I go first? I mean, okay. Uh you are the guest, so, so yeah, I'll let you go first. My first impression was it was okay. Like there was some things I did enjoy it about it, um, seeing some familiar faces and kind of getting back into, you know, the adventures of Jean-Luc Picard and stuff. Um, but it's hard to judge a show like off one episode, you know, like you got to let it find its footing. Cause yeah. even like the original, like the OG next generation stuff, like it took it a couple seasons before, like it was cool. Um, so I'm still like, it's a mix. It, the first episode was a mixed bag for me. Like, I like the stuff with Data, like, you know, getting to revisit with him. Um, and he actually looked a lot better than um, I thought just from, like, the teasers and stuff. Like, you know, sometimes they say, oh, the effects aren't finished. I think maybe that was the case this time because he, like, the de-aging and stuff looked yeah. pretty cool. Um, but there's just parts about it that, like, feel like these people didn't watch, like, a Star Trek show and they just pick, like, the most familiar elements and, like, are trying to... <laughs> like spin it that way it's like you have you know data everybody knows because he's like spock kind of in next generation mm -hmm. everybody knows picard we know t earl gray um and that kind of stuff but like just the way that like how the story's setting up it's like is this makes sense for picard to be the one having this connection okay. to data and things like that well, but well, I wait. i'm still gonna watch the show like i'm not like off it or anything but it's like there's still some things i'm some concerns unless they get resolved. I gotcha. In the next episode. So. Um, and yeah, so what was your impression of it, Rachel? Like, because uh, obviously it's your. Y we are both not super into Trek, yeah. but what what did you think when you watched it? Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, yeah, I I was actually kind of thrown off by how it looked, but like, I was just like, I guess like there's really not a ton you can do, especially like with a TV show, but, um. But anyway, so, like, yeah, I didn't ever watch the original series at all. Um, I think my mom watched it quite a bit. Um, but it was, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I kind of liked the new female character. Um, at least, like, the how they introduced her and stuff was pretty badass. <laughs> but then, like, yeah. then it just was kind of, like, anticlimactic. And then I was just kind of like, okay, so where is this going to go from here? And, like, I'm still kind of, like, things happened that I was, like, told, like, oh, that's important. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I think for, like, if you if this really is your first time ever watching it, like, you may not get it, I guess. Or you may, yeah, you may not understand, like, like what's going on or what's, like, what the implications are of sort of certain plot points. But I guess that's kind of to be expected because they just assume that you're a fan already. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I mean, it's... overall it was, it wasn't great, but it wasn't, like, terrible. It had some cool moments, yeah. And also I just kept, like, kind of tripping out over the fact that they were, like, literally at the Anaheim Convention Center. <laughs> and, like, going, yeah, going up cool. staircases yeah. that I've done photo shoots yeah. on, and I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> Yeah, for real. <laughs> I was like, I know is... exactly where they're sitting, and I can go sit there. And like, dude, everybody's gonna be fucking like taking pictures oh, yeah. there. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so I think yeah. it, at this point, like, let's go into some of the spoilers. What uh, what were the major like plot points that you liked, and what things were kind of like you didn't enjoy i guess so let's go with you bergen first what, um, what things did you well, really enjoy what things were you like really problematic for you 
when you put it that way, I guess my biggest beef is like with the story so far. Like I like the characters that are in it and you know, the actors playing and stuff and all, but the story is where like I'm a little concerned moving forward. Cause um, you know, there's just you know, they kind of have this scene, a big exposition dump, um, when Picard's being interviewed by a news network. And they kind of do this like, oh, we're going to have this hero, Jean-Luc Picard, on. And then they blindside him by trying to say, hey, all this fucked up shit happened, you know, and you were kind of around for it. Like, what do you have to say for yourself? And it's like, well, the stuff that they're trying to pin on him isn't really like, that's not his fault. You mm-hmm. know, like, it's kind of strange that they're trying to paint Picard as like some kind of rebellious or like blame, like make a, a, a scapegoat out of him or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm like kind of concerned with like where that's going because... It's like two unrelated things. Like Picard quit Starfleet because uh, he wanted to help the Romulans, you know, survive this star going supernova. But Starfleet's like, nah, we can't can't like do that for some unknown reason. They don't really expense like we can use our resources better elsewhere. So he does it, and it's like relatively successful. But then in a separate incident, uh, synthetics they call them in the show, like basically people like data, like artificial life forms like destroy a major Starfleet installation, but somehow it's like Picard's fault that this happened hmm. and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, that I didn't really I'm not understand. sure how they're going <laughs> to, yeah. Like, and it's like done in a, yeah, it's kind of done a clunky way and like really quick. It doesn't, like, it does, yeah, doesn't feel like something he would have done or like, or maybe or not, even, but like, so, I don't know. It just didn't seem like I said, I don't even, even watch just, the show very much, but I was like, yeah, this he's is weird. Getting for that. It's like, yeah. why is it his fault that these other group of people did shit? You yeah, know, like that's kind of strange. Um, and some of the like, and I called it pretty quick that the female character in the show was like related to Data. I don't think they really hide it super well. Not that they're trying to. Yeah, but, um, I, I was like, yeah, it didn't take me yeah, very like, long. You to just see that, that shit coming, <laughs> and it's cool. <clears throat> but it's like, where is it going? And like, why is it such a surprise if the clues are like literally in Picard's face? Mm. You know, like they have a scene where he goes and looks at a painting. That was that, the, that was I was going to ask you about that like that felt yeah, so clunky I was like whole sequence, I was like, <laughs> so, like you, Look, you try it's to her explain in the picture like, oh. yeah <laughs> hands on face <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah this, oh I can't believe this is the person that's been in my face for, for the last thirty yeah. years. Because Where he goes have I seen to, this person? Oh yeah, I look at this yeah. picture how many times a day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 oh, man. the fact that had to ask the computer information about this gift that was given to him by Data in the first place seemed like, yeah. oh, we need to like, have a uh, Star Trek technology flex as opposed to, does this <laughs> yeah. make sense? Like, he could have gone to that room and like, you know, looked at that painting and told us all that stuff just out loud. Yeah. Like, you don't have to have a computer telling that because it makes Picard sound like an idiot. It's like, yeah. wait, Picard, or I'm sorry, Data gave you a gift, told you the name of the painting, and you need to ask the computer, like, give me the origin of this painting. It's like, you didn't just find that. Like, one of your... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, or, like, or, like, at least explain, okay, he has Alzheimer's now, and this is the only way he can remember shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it's really been that something. long, yeah, so... Um, in the next generation, he had, I think he was diagnosed with this disease called, like, um, I can't remember the name of the disease. I'm thinking I'm getting my movies and shows mixed up. But he was like, there was something he had to deal with, like, oh, as you get older, like, you're going to lose your brain. I think it was in the finale. Hmm. Oh, um, okay. Like, really old in the future. And it's like, oh, you're, we don't trust that you're seeing all this stuff because you have this disease. It's like basically Alzheimer's in the future and stuff. Oh, okay. um, so, like, that shit. It just felt strange, like, how they're trying to explain the story. Maybe the story is cool. I mean, the ending of the show I thought was sweet with, you know, Romulan inside of this Borg cube. It's like, okay, like, at least yeah. gives you a little bit of a hook and see where it's going to yeah, go. That was. <laughs> but, like, if you like, were to compare, like, The Mandalorian with yeah. Picard, like, two shows from historic franchises kind of, you know, hearkening back to the past and stuff. Mandalorian did his job much better in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Steve Picard catches up and gets, you know, some good footing and momentum moving forward. But um, I'm I'm just undecided. Like, I love Star Trek and all that shit, but I can't be like, this show is going to be great after <laughs> one episode. It's fair. It's uh, fair. Um, I, I, you, the thing that you mentioned about him having that, like, like, issue with his brain or whatever Alzheimer's that he gets diagnosed with. And now I'm like, 
did they steal that for Logan? <laughs> oh. like, I mean, I know that it's not like, I mean, they may have done something. I can't remember if they did that, something like that in the comic books at all. I know they changed Logan, the old man Logan story quite a bit for Logan, but that's essentially what happens to Xavier in Logan. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like, did they just lift that from Next Generation to do Logan? <laughs> like, that's weird. <laughs> um, I they yeah, probably no. didn't, but I'm just that just what Not came in my head. But like they, there was definitely some weird Professor X vibes in the premiere of the show too, where like people are having visions about him and he's having dreams and visions about other people. So like, dude, does he have like psychic connection and shit? Like, what's yeah, going on? like well, the, there's a there's a scene where di- well, yeah, like. I think it's after she like supposedly they put this bag on her head and somehow that's supposed to activate her as a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it was weird. I was like, okay, and then she just goes berserker and kills fucking everybody. And she's like, how the fuck did I do this? I'm like Neo in the Matrix. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, it was just <laughs> it was just kind of a weird like open yeah, to it. Like- and then she just all of a sudden like. Um, I forget if it was before or after she talked to her mom, but she starts having this vision of Picard. And mm-hmm. she doesn't know why. She's never met him or anything like that. And then when she tells her mom about him, she just says, like, does, I forget, does she say, like, go to him or something? Yeah, he can help you. Oh, he like, can help you, you yeah. Going. So, yeah, her mom's, like, she's, like, basically, like, video chatting with her mom. And she's, like, you have to go to him now. And she's, like, what? Like, <laughs> Like she's like, no, you have to go to her. And she's like, okay, cool. I guess that's what I have to do now. So, yeah. yeah. And another thing I was telling Chris earlier, you know, about like something that kind of bugged me with the show. This is like super nerdy, and I I apologize in advance. But like, as a <laughs> trek, it's feel like, free it, to be as nerdy as you want to be on this yeah, show, Bernie. I mean, I, it fly. No whole <laughs> um, no whole bar on this shit. Um, and like I can't even tell you if there's ever been a Star Trek episode where you don't see somebody beaming to and from a location. And in this episode, there is transporting, but like you don't see any of the like protagonists or main characters doing it. Like Picard and Dodge, uh, the woman character, they they just appear places. Like, dude, you got to give me some Trek like beam me up shit. Yeah. <laughs> like I see Captain Picard. Like you know, even if you don't see him getting on a transporter pad like the next scene it should show him like beaming someplace like yeah. you can't just pop up place like that's weird because like that's such an easy trek thing to do and it's so common so it was just, it was just odd that that was missing from it you know yeah that was actually and i find i was i was trying to remember what i was going to ask you or t- talk to you about but is it uh, do you find it interesting like how like obviously like you know each each track that has come out has been reflective of the times. Like, do you think it's interesting? It's like, this is kind of, this must be stuff that like people now are thinking is futuristic versus like what we thought was futuristic in like the nineties, which is now like shit we already have. Yeah. You know and I mean? it's almost- like, it's, I just thought that was kind of interesting to like, see like, okay, so this is this aesthetic. Like it's a very different aesthetic than previous Star Trek things mm. I've seen. Yeah, it's like much 20- more modern and like s- everything's very sleek looking. But it's mm-hmm. not like it doesn't have that like Trek feel, I guess, to it. Hmm. And, yeah, because yeah. even the familiar sites, like when they're in Ten Forward early on, um, the interior is different. It wasn't like they just plopped them on the old set. Like they did like a modern kind of revisionist version of it and stuff. And um, I think moving forward, that's where the show could be really cool. How mm-hmm. they use Trek to its advantage to show us cool new shit. Because um, that's what it's always been about, you know, like just projecting what the future could be, like yeah. what the possibilities and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's something to be excited to check out moving forward because um, the story isn't really doing it a whole lot for me. But yeah. <laughs> once we see some cameos, um, excited to see that. And I'm, I do like that they're, you know, keeping it. I'm trying to. Figure out how, you probably have to add this shit. <laughs> um, like, this is like a way to, or how they um are integrating some old stuff with this like new storyline. They keep referencing this character uh, Maddox, who is in a pretty notable episode of Next Generation. It's like okay, that's cool that they're still pulling from the lore and like trying to keep it continuous and yeah. shit. Because that was one of my issues with Discovery is like they kind of were 
working backwards and it makes it more difficult to like line up with what we know yeah so with this like moving forward like visually and uh hopefully some of the characters they can do some pretty neat stuff but we'll see if i had to give it a letter grade i'd give it like a c plus b minus maybe but i am a tough critic you are so, you are very hard to please hard. mr bergen <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i would give it about a b too <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you, and I, you explained this to me before uh, when we were talking about it, um, but you were saying that you had a kind of a issue with just the Data and Picard relationship versus what you'd seen in Next Generation. I just wanted you to kind of like expand on that too. Yeah, because, you know, all the characters in Next Generation had like unique dynamics and relationships, you know. Um, because in the finale, the last, like, there's a, uh, they play a poker game amongst the crew throughout the series. Like, it's usually Riker, Worf, uh, Data, Jordy, Troy's joined in from time to time, and, um, Crusher. The only person who was missing was Captain Picard. Like, he was the captain. Like, he's, that's his crew, you know? Like, he's tight with them and loves them, but he has, like, that, uh, he keeps that distance for a reason, you mm-hmm. know, just because captain you have to do that so the last scene in the finale is him going to play poker with them and they're like he's like i should have done this a long time ago and like, you're always welcome man like it's cool um but he never had like that closeness with the characters until that moment so for them to act like him and data are like inseparable like uniquely bonded is a little strange because their relationship in the show and even the movies was like kind of I don't say distant, but it wasn't as like intimate as mm. like Jordy's friendship and stuff, mm-hmm. and like Riker and Troy's connection. Um, so oh, it the- seems a little bit of retcon to like make it seem like Data would share his deepest secrets with Picard. It's like, dude, Jordy's your dude, man. Like <laughs> that's your guy for all the series and everything. So <laughs> we'll have to see how it plays out, but. It, it just seemed like they were kind of changing the characterizations a little bit to fit the story. I don't, like not everybody might agree with that because everybody in next generation loves each other, but um, you know, Data even says like, "Oh, he's like my best friend," like on multiple occasions. Mm. So it seems strange. Like, why would you give a picture of your daughter to Captain Picard? You know, yeah, and Data would be or Jordy would be cool with that, but yeah, I just thought that was a little odd. But I want to see how they do with the other characters, too, as they come in and out of the show. Like, maybe they uh, kind of make you remember what it used to be like. But it's just, um, it's a different take for a Trek show, too, because most of the shows are ensembles. Like, now this is, like, solely Picard. You're focusing on him um, specifically. So we'll mm-hmm. see if, they, if they're up to the challenge with it, you know? Yeah, and I'm intrigued to see how they fit in some of these other characters. I'm, I'm really intrigued by how they're going to fit in Jerry Ryan. As seven of nine. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, I think it's yeah. really cool that they're gonna try to do that, and I think that you know, I I didn't watch a ton of Next Generation. I watched a little bit. I watched. I actually probably watched more more Voyager than I. Interesting. Than any other show, for whatever reason, and I'm not sure why. But um, did I did like. Did like, or like did it make you want to watch more Trek, or was it just kind of? It was intriguing. <laughs> I just never really was like so wrapped up in the story that I need to revisit every week. But when I was watching it, it was fun. Seven nine in her Borg skin suit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that. I mean, it was, that was teenager, elementary <laughs> school me, uh, working out my own my own uh, <laughs> wants and needs. I guess I don't know. But it, no, it was really. I mean, I I liked that crew. I thought it was cool i thought that was interesting to have um a dynamic it just seemed very different than what next generation was i guess and Mm -hmm. for whatever reason just whoever i was with they watched that show it wasn't like i turned it on (laughs) either i was just like at like a friend's house and it would be on Um, yeah so uh it it, i think i just think it's cool that they're integrating that because i think voyager doesn't get a ton of credit in the pantheon of star trek stuff Mm -hmm. which I, I don't know whether, you know, people love it or hate it or whatever, but I just it just doesn't get as much love, you know, as the original series or Next Generation or even Deep Space Nine. Um, it just seems like it kind of gets forgotten a little bit. So it's cool to see Jerry Ryan get to come back and play that character and finally kind of integrate Voyager into the timeline. Yeah, and yeah, that's going to be cool, man, because like, Voyager, I never finished it, but... 
I didn't remember like really disliking it, but it wasn't interesting enough to keep me going with it. Yeah. You know, it was just one of those like from people I read that have gone back and revisited. It's kind of like okay, it's fine, but it's not like oh shit, like this is like one of the best ones. Yeah, and I can see that I, it's oh. not like groundbreaking. I don't think it was like a. Uh, <laughs> It didn't push the boundaries as much as Deep Space Nine or Next Generation did, I, I would assume. Um, yeah. What were you going to say? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, Bergen, how excited excited are you for more uh, it's Riker, right? The yeah. guy who sits? Yeah. Like, oh, dude, if they have that... Are you, are you excited for more? <laughs> that's going to be awesome. If they, if they have the Riker maneuver in the show... <laughs> Like, I will be. It, the whole show will be great, even if. The rest <laughs> well, it, like for some reason, I don't know why, but like I don't know if you watched the like they had a like on like on the next episode or like a preview of the season, and mm-hmm. the, there was, he was in there for like a split second, and that was like the first thing I thought of was like, oh my god, sis. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you can't unsee it. Like that's such a. Like, it's so weird. I know, like he has like a back issue but it's such an odd way to like sit up and sit down like, <laughs> up. like i just never noticed this the whole time shit. so good oh, so if good. we did a <laughs> that'd be pretty cool um but we'll see how much they balance like the remember this kind of stuff um it's fairly light in the first episode which i guess is cool because they're trying to distinguish itself um but we'll have to see how it goes mm-hmm. yeah we'll both go where no one has gone before yeah um yeah so I'm, I'm looking forward to i actually watching it i need to find a get cbs all yeah, access and like that and yeah, watch it watch show so we yeah. can converse with it a little more but for sure um but yeah um, like who is it made for is it for like next gen fans or is it for like new trek yeah yeah we're gonna find out pretty soon i think yeah bergen i did want to talk to you about bad boys three because this is a movie that came out and I had almost we, we missed out on going it, to it with each other. Uh, it's one of the movies that we quote with each other quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, I did want to chat with you a little bit about it just because it was it, it, it was kind of a fun movie. What did you think? We can go into yeah, spoilers, it, I think. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. Like a fun, dumb movie. Um with some characters that you like to see together on screen and some silly shit. You know, I didn't, I didn't have many complaints. Like I went in expecting what I got, you know, the action <laughs> yeah. was, was cool and like over the top and entertaining. Uh, there were some genuine laughs in there, like some funny dialogue and back and forth. Um, I did like the cameos and callbacks and stuff. Like I thought it was cool. Reggie was in it. Oh yeah. I was so happy <laughs> when Reggie came on screen. Uh, yeah, just cause I would not have expected that. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that at all either. It's like, oh, yeah, all right, dude. Like, he stuck around. He's, like, grown up and shit. So that's cool seeing those callbacks. Um, but, yeah, like, the, it was, it was a, it did what it needed to do. Um, I think it was missing a little bit of Michael Bay's touch because you could tell they were trying to imitate the style of the first two. But, yeah. like, there's just not the Michael Bay polish, like, where he gets his shots and, like, just it makes it look cool despite what you think of the rest of the movie. <laughs> um, you know, the twist in the movie, you know, that's probably the most controversial. Uh, yeah, and this is one thing that I was going to I was gonna tell Rachel, because I hadn't talked to Rachel really that much about it, besides saying that I thought it was fun. And I was going to tell her and t- ask her to see if she felt like this would be ridiculous to her as a, a moviegoer. Okay. So, throughout <laughs> the two or three movies, Mike Lowry, Mike Lowry, as everyone Mike has to call him. Lowry. You have to put some stank on the name. <laughs> it's just it's just what happens. Okay. Mike Lowry has been a ladies' oh. man for the entirety of all these movies. Mm-hmm. Always, you know, first movie, he's kind of a dog. Like, he's always, like, people yeah. are always coming to his house. And, mm-hmm. like, he's dating a sex worker and all this yep. other stuff. Like, what is the cat doing? Okay, another point for anyone paying attention to cats on the pad co- podcast. That's why you need to uh, have a, a visual. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but he has been, you know, uh, you know, with the ladies for the entire thing, and then he gets with Gabrielle Union for the uh, the second movie, and he's dating her throughout that movie. And then this movie, for whatever reason, they've broken up. They didn't really explain that. Whatever. Um, 
But the big twist in this movie is that the big villain that has been chasing him and like like his his mother has been like trying to get him to kill Mike Lowry because Mike Lowry put his dad away in jail and all that stuff. You find out that that woman had a relationship with Mike Lowry before he got on the force with Martin Lawrence and that the kid who has been hunting Mike Lowry is Mike Lowry's kid. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's it's exactly dumb, the... <laughs> Completely stupid and unnecessary. Right. And you figure by the end of the movie that this is like, but then for like a joke, like, oh, he's not my kid. Like, bang, bang. Fuck, pop, like, yeah. Like put bullets in him. But like, no, like, it's <laughs> definitely his kid. And yeah, like, it, it's just strange for them to basically make it like the one person Mike Lowry has loved enough. And like, you know, of all the lovers he's had, like, this is the one person he's loved enough to fucking hit it raw and have it. <laughs> <laughs> He's the fucking drug kingpin's wife. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like, I think so even he's... I think even like Martin Lawrence's character in the movie is kind of like the audience. Like really, this woman? Yeah. Like really, this is what happened? Like, yeah, like they tried. To, I don't know if they thought they were adding like any stakes with that kind of character yeah. twist or not. But like, I mean, they do make a lot of jokes about it, so you can't take it too serious. But like, they play it straight for the most yeah. part. Like, yeah, it's a real thing. Like. Even at the end of the movie, like after all this terrible shit this kid's done, like including murdering Joe Pantoliano in Ooh. front of Mike Lowry, like Joey Pants dies in Will Smith's arms. Like oh, he's a character from the that, beginning, which I, is a fucking <laughs> shocking moment of the movie. I will but say like, that that one mo- moment, like, was the really the saddest moment I had in the movie. It was like, yeah. the captain is like one of my favorite characters throughout Bad Boys 1, Bad Boys 2, and even at the beginning of this movie. Like, I just love. The way yeah. that Joey, and like his his candor and like the way he speaks is so much fun. And then he just gets this gruesome death, like not gruesome but like surprising. In the... He well, he gets like shot in the throat yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Like he doesn't. It's not like quick and like it's it's fucked up because it's a character you actually care about. Like, yeah. No, not him. You know, <sighs> like these people are pretty invincible in these movies. Like you know, the exception of a handful of characters, like nobody really that important that you care about dies in them. Um, yeah. But it's like, fuck, man, like, this guy sucks. He killed the captain. Like, he's got to go down. Yeah. But then the movie, like, Wilson was like, oh, like, I can get some time off your sentence. Like, we'll do some shit. It's like, so it's going to be father and son bad boys with this kid who has <laughs> really no redeeming qualities other than being a son he's never known. Yeah. It's weird. You know, so. It's it's strange. It's a, it's a strange setup to, uh, like... Even but the action set piece is cool. It's just like, what? Why? <laughs> why was this the decision? I'm sorry. But... Yeah, like Mike oh. Lowry to be the son to like keep the Bad Boys franchise interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did say like just like Bergen was saying, like this movie had a lot of humor, a lot of fun to it. The action sequences were pretty darn good. But yeah, you're you're right. I think there are little things that are missing that Michael Bay does whatever you think of Michael Bay's movies or whatever, but he knows how to direct they action. Amazing. They look fantastic. Yeah. Like every single one of them. Yeah. And Bad yeah, Boys this, this is... Slightly that... lower budget yeah. like Michael Bay movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. And Bad Boys was his first one, right? That was his very first film? Shit. Yeah, I think so. Because I think wow. before that, I was I was yes. listening to... I mean, I'm going to plug someone else's podcast, The Bechtel Cast which I'm surprised they even did it because this the movies do not treat women very well. <laughs> but, oh, no. I mean, you know Michael Bay roles, man. Yeah, exactly. Um, but even then, they were like, oh, this movie's still a lot of fun. And for like a Michael Bay movie, this was super intriguing, which I was yeah. surprised by from their perspective that they still would have fun with it. But um, yeah, I guess he, this was his first actual feature film after he had basically just came up he had come up um, just doing music videos. Music videos. Like yeah. So, so The Rock was after the first Bad Boys? I believe so, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but it's always good fun when Will Smith and Martin Lawrence get together. Um, you know, they still... I mean, Martin Lawrence definitely moving a little bit slower <laughs> than he was in the first two movies. And uh, uh, some people I was with made a good point, too. It's like, you know, they played this whole angle of 
Marcus, his character doesn't want to like be a violent cop anymore. It's like, dude, just drop that and let's get back to him being a bad boy. Yeah. You know, like let's just have him have fun again. Like he was a family man in the first movie. I know you have to have this dynamic, like one's old and wants to like slow down. The other's like, no, we can do it forever. But like, it'd be cool if he didn't spend like majority of the movie, like not wanting to be in on the shit. Yeah. 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 Or cool. If he's just like, let's fucking do it, man. You know, this is cool. Shit. Or like him getting the, after, you know, after Will Smith is down for a little while, he's like on a fervor of like, Hey, I got to do this now for, for Mike. Yeah. Do it like Mike. Or yes. Whatever. Exactly. Like that. I think that would have been cool. Um, but yeah, like they, they kind of gave him the uh, like like the the Sam Raimi like uh, Spider Man arc where he doesn't want to be Spider Man for three movies, you know? Yeah, <laughs> they keep that shit. yeah. It's like, come on, Sam. Like we get it. Like Spider Man, Peter Parker needs to be down with like doing that shit. <laughs> at some point, he's got he's done three movies. He's got to want to be Spider Man at some point. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty really cool, man. When Spider Man's totally grooving in that shit. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. it. It was it was if you like the first two bad boys, I almost kind of want to rewatch them because I, I was watching. Um, well, of all people, I was watching the Jack Septic guy watching. The, I don't know if you, if you guys ever saw the. Um, someone took that clip of Spider Man dancing and like took all the audio. Oh out yeah, of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was watching that, and he was like, and he was saying, he's like, he's like, you know what? I used to like really, really hate like this movie and this scene he's like but now going back and rewatching it later on he's like i fucking love <laughs> wow. i don't know and i was like i don't know i'm like um i'll give it a try but i was like i, I definitely have not watched that uh, i have Spider-Man not seen it since years. i don't think i've seen it since the movie theater because i hated it so much yeah so now i like want to like <laughs> i kind of do want to go <laughs> back and be like is it different now the that we have these new movies and stuff like I that's feel kind like of it'll, well, well, that's kind like of what he was worse. saying. <laughs> well, not looking, I guess, yeah. in terms of like visual effects, but like no, no. But I think it. I feel yeah. like the movie would be worse knowing like how these movies have gone now, like yeah. how good these movies have been. I don't know. Comparatively, I don't. I don't know. There might be some things that you appreciate a little bit more about it, um, but I, I'm, I don't know if it's going to be a better movie necessarily. <laughs> You know, like yeah, that one's a tough hole to dig out of. It was just <laughs> like you walk out of the theater and you're like, dude, like what the hell happened? Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the last movie I saw in Arizona um, before I moved uh, east, um, where I ended up meeting you guys for the first time. That was last night out with a group of friends. Like, oh you know, wow! Next day, flew out of town. Um, so it was just like, oh damn it, man! Like that was the movie <laughs> that, like, with, with this crew. Uh... Well, yeah. but uh, I uh, had that one. That I mean, that could be a revisit and definitely a podcast episode. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think so too. It'd be really long and interesting, or it's like, nope, movie sucks. See you later. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I guess I was saying, like, not to just watch that, but like, watch all of. Oh them. yeah, all of yeah. Toby's oh, three. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, I'm hundreds yeah. now. Because right? I haven't seen <laughs> like like I said, I, haven't, I don't think I've seen any of them in years and years and years. So it might yeah. be fun to like Those get together are, and like, have a marathon. <laughs> First two of those definitely still hold up. I can speak to that. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll have to do that at some point. Um, another thing I wanted to cover just with you on the show is obviously the huge news this week. And it's obviously not not super pertaining to nerddom, but it is something that, you know, he, you can call it like sports nerds or whatever. Like, uh, it was a big news thing today of like for everyone because I think Kobe Bryant is a name that even if you didn't know sports, you knew that name and you didn't, maybe you didn't know why you knew the name or whatever it was. Um, but you knew who he was <laughs> and he's obviously worked with people like John Williams, Marvel comics even did some features with him because they did some athlete features, I think just like 10 years ago or something like that. And, um, yeah, it, it kind of shocked the, <laughs> the whole uh i mean at least la um it, it kind of shocked the whole world that whole news story um when i <laughs> I'll, I'll just say like i think me and you uh bergen were on the same text thread when mm-hmm. we even heard the first thing about it um uh our friend scott texted us and was like hey did you guys see this kobe stuff and i was 
I first thing I did was just Google Kobe and I was like, what? And yeah, I literally I mean, Rachel heard me. I literally yelled, what the fuck? Yeah, I was like in my- up the stairs and I was like, um, speak to <laughs> yeah. me. What is happening? It's <laughs> in, like, that tone of voice or like something genuinely unsettling and mm-hmm. wrong. Oh, I knew something was up. I was like, what, what, what? Tell me. What? And I needed to like just stare at my phone for a while because I just needed to like verify what I was looking at. Um, and obviously, you know, with us working where we work, not saying exactly where we work, we kind of can't even get away from the news of that anyway. Um, but yeah, what was your, I guess, <laughs> same as me, I guess, your what was your reaction to when you saw it? I mean, just disbelief, man. You know, uh, it's it's just a, a bomb that just gets dropped on you. Like, when you see it, you're like, okay, that's not a joke. But you're like, that can't be real at the same time. Yeah. You know, was, you know I was just kind of confused at first because I was getting, you know, the text from that group thread and from other people. And then my girlfriend called me and she's like a very lukewarm to probably ice cold sports fan like she likes hoops and stuff but she's not passionate about it or you know or anything like that but when she called me i was like dude this shit is real because if she's calling to check in and be like yo did you hear about this and this is a big deal and it's just it's still surreal man it doesn't really feel real i mean we have a unique perspective and um like you said before how we can't really remove ourselves from it and also living in Los Angeles, too, and feeling yeah. and the impact around the city. Um, it's just complete shock, man. I mean, I am didn't grow up a Laker fan or Kobe fan, but um, it, it's just very sad. And it's I don't think I've ever grieved or felt more for a death of somebody that I didn't even really know. Like, it, we didn't know Kobe, but it feels like we yeah. did. Like, damn, man, and like, that, this guy's gone, you know? And that's what the, the shocking yeah. thing is, and I think that, as we keep hearing more and more stuff about him and all that stuff. And as I've gone along, like kind of learning about it and, you know, I, I was always, a, I was a Lakers fan when I was a kid, my parents immigrated here to LA and that was like the first sport they kind of understood. So we would watch Lakers games every once in a while. And even though my dad didn't exactly understand the sport, we would watch those games because the Lakers are just the thing here. And I missed out on uh, most of the magic era for the most part because Mm -hmm. i i I watched a little bit of it but i think he retired by the time i was like really cognizant of like what the lakers were Mm -hmm. um and by that time i moved on to like just being being to watch the tail end of like or the beginning and tail end of michael jordan's story and then you're like by the end of the time of michael jordan you're like oh we're not gonna see another person like this and then kobe came up Mm -hmm. and you're just like oh my god this guy has all of michael jordan's skills and it's it's crazy. It was just one of those things that, like, okay, now L.A. has another hero to mm-hmm. look up to or whatever. And, you know, like just, like you said, that just hearing about it was just so jarring because you just assumed this guy. And I talked to you about it a little bit. Like, I just, I just assumed this guy was going to be around for a while. Most of our NBA legends are. Like, they don't have a ton of heroes that die young because of like drugs or whatever like a lot of them live long long lives we still have bill russell we still have um a lot of like kareem we have still have a lot of legends that are still living that Mm -hmm. can still impart basketball knowledge to people and you just thought kobe was going to be one of those guys and you were seeing like the evolution of him finally becoming like (laughs) like the mentor that he should be like in the last two years, uh, mentoring mm-hmm. guys and stuff like that. So uh, it it was just a shock to the system. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you have uh, Rachel have any like opinions about it or whatever. But I didn't know if like that if that was like jarring for you at all. Um, I'm like I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have mixed feelings. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. I I'm totally like, <laughs> I I think I sh- I shared one of a, an article from um, our friend Tanya. I don't know if you read that article, Bergen. Um, I don't I don't think so. I'm not, did it come out after his death or yeah after his death? death. Um, okay. And she was reconciling the 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 thing. And the big thing, obviously, is you know he wasn't a perfect person. He had a definite mark on his career. 
he had the the rape allegations and all that stuff and there are people who are very adamant about not deifying him as a person and not you know not like not so much not like it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's like, complicated we don't I'm very, it's very, it is very shocking. It's very sad that someone so talented had to pass away so soon. And it is extremely sad that his daughter passed away yeah. like he did. She yeah. Did. Um, I think that's really what's gotten me the most is, yeah. you know, that she had, you know, she was already becoming so talented and wanted to show, you know, mm-hmm. her dad that, yeah. you know, she, yeah, she wanted to follow in his footsteps. She did. And, um, and so that's very, very sad that she had so much promise and, you know, yeah, all that. But, yeah, it's hard. Um, and being a victim of something like that, sometimes it's just hard to, like, know how to feel about that person because there's... No doubt. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, know, I totally, like yeah, and, I totally get it. And I, like I said, like, and I, I'm not all about forgiving people and stuff, but um, that's a pretty horrible... So yeah. it's off. It's a and horrible for that thing. To yeah. have to like watch him be, you know, idolized and glorified, um, you know, for the rest of his life. Yeah. Um, that's extremely difficult, you know. And but it's something that we shouldn't forget about him. Yeah. Because it is part of. And who I definitely he is. don't like. I've seen some people like being like, "Yay!" I'm like, "How fucked up are you?" I'm like, "Fuck you!" Like. Yeah. Like those, it's, I can't, I can't take those people. But like, like it is. She it's a, his death and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw, yeah, I yeah. saw one stupid video. I was like, oh come on, dude! Like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, be yeah, sensitive. Like, it, Jesus Christ! It's just one of those things. He, <laughs> he, like most people, and I'm not gonna say like like most people really, but he was not a perfect person. He had this mark on him, and people are not going to forgive him, give him for it. And it's not like I'm gonna overlook that that happened or anything like that um but i the point that tanya was making in the article was that you know she followed his career and i i'm not saying everyone has to think this way obviously but she followed his career and after that happened he really did dedicate himself to basketball to his daughters to his wife and i take a personally i take a little bit of solace in that that he never went on to do that again. He never talked down to women again. He was a very major uh, proponent of women's sports and women's mm-hmm. sports idols. So I take a little bit of solace in that. And I obviously won't forget that that is part of his legacy. But yeah, yeah it's complicated. And mm-hmm. a lot of people are just in general hurt right yeah. now about what was, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, working where we work and being in L.A. and, you know... My work is right outside, right where, right near the LA Live, and you go and go down there and you see all these people trying to just make sense of this this thing. Yeah. And there's just there's a, a lot, lot to unpack with Kobe. Yeah. There's definitely a lot to unpack because yeah. I like hated the guy for a long time. Like when I watched him play, I'm like, Dude, fuck <laughs> I've, this guy. Man. I have heard you <laughs> on many occasions say, "Fuck Kobe Bryant." Yeah, in a sports sense, quite a few <laughs> times. That dude was, like, you know, an obstacle for my team. You know, he yeah. prevent us from finding greater success and all that stuff. But um, it's you. It's just interesting that like you can still be impacted by the death of somebody that you just like weren't fully on board with. You know, it's like because you can still appreciate the impact and empathize with what other people are going through and seeing how it affects them. Yeah. You know, I think that's like just how big of a, you know, person he was on this world. You know, there's people globally, you know, repping Kobe, like his, his clothing, his shoes, tributes and vigils everywhere. It, it's not like, I mean, people die every day, but not people like Kobe pass away every day. Yeah. Yeah. In such an unexpected manner. Like that's what, like, we couldn't prepare for it. Yeah. You know, there wasn't exactly. anybody that, like, I mean, Kobe just taking the helicopter. Like, it's just another day in the life. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, we're just wall to wall coverage on sports networks and internet, Twitter. It's like, damn, like, Kobe, like, really in around. So it, it's strange, man. I mean, we're just the opening stages of it and we're all still kind of processing it. But, um, 
I still can't believe it. You know, it just it's it does it, feel. I've been talking to people, just like it just still feels very very surreal. It's yeah. very surreal that all these athletes that we've gone to idolize and and just watch on TV all the time talk about him and have to talk about him in the past tense. Like mm-hmm. that's strange, mm-hmm. really really strange. And yeah, and I, I would be remiss not to say, you know, I obviously, you know, I feel for uh, Kobe's the big name, right? There were nine other people or eight other people on that plane. His daughter, Gianna, I'm um, just going to read off their names so that, you know, people will remember all of them. Uh, Ara Zabayan, Sarah and Peyton Chester, Christina Mauser, John Carey and Alyssa Altabelli. Like these people were, you know, families and people that kobe trusted and ha- had around and like were part of his team and all that stuff like those lives are also affected too so it's just it's just a tr- like crazy tragedy yeah. and you know something that was gonna <laughs> you know affect people for a while so i just urge people to try to you know be kind to each other you know call your loved ones like you know people have been saying like you just don't know what whole what future holds the next day the next hour next minute you know i think the the, one of the things that you know reading statements from players and seeing how emotional they are like lebron put out a statement today saying you know he talked to him that morning you know like i talked he talked to him before he got on the plane to get to come back to go to philly to play or where or where to go back to la like Mm -hmm. That's crazy, and you just never, you never know. Um, and obviously, you know, like people have gone through things like this time and time again. People uh, pass away quickly and and timely deaths and all that stuff. It's just a, you know, it's a reminder to keep your loved ones in your mind at all times and make sure you know that they uh, make sure that they know that you love them and that you keep them in your heart and. All that stuff, and I think that's important. Hundred percent, man. Yep. I mean, it's, unfortunately, it takes times like this to remind us of that. But um, you know, that was like one of the things I've come to respect about Kobe is the mama mentality, like how to really just give your all and your focus to what you have in front of you um, at all times. You yeah, know, like just he didn't take anything for granted because he just not that he would expect to like pass away the next day, but he just was always in attack mode, like whether it's yeah. you know, competing or learning or being, you know, a father and a husband and stuff. Um, he really was all in at all times. So I, you know, it's something to carry with us moving forward. If they're, if they're, if you want to take anything positive from him, I mean, definitely going to have a share of haters. That's not going to change because he's one of those type of dudes, but um, it's, it's crazy, man. I just, I wish it didn't happen. You know, just yeah. Like, it was kind of normal. It just doesn't feel normal to like not have Kobe Bryant in in the world. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Um, well, uh, unfortunately, to bring it down on that sad note, but uh, yeah, what are we gonna like, see? Like, we can't end it on like a super <laughs> sad thing. Um, <laughs> we got the Super Bowl. If, if you have Super Bowl fans out there, yeah. oh yeah, we got the Super Bowl coming up Super next Bowl. week. Harley uh, Quinn's coming out. Oh soon. yeah, I'm so excited. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be cool. I'm stoked, dude. Yeah. I like that it's rated R. I'm a yeah. big fan. That they're oh, like, and I know, love oh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead so much, and I haven't seen her since, like, really? I don't think I've seen her in anything since uh, Scott Pilgrim, just personally, because I know she was in, yes. um, wasn't she in the, um, in that Cloverfield thing? movie? Yes, yeah, I uh, believe right? so, yeah. Like Cloverfield, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Cloverfield, Cloverfield Lane. Lane. Yeah. She was in that. Yeah. She was incredible that was in that. Good. good in that. Yeah. She watched that. Pretty but cool. I'm stoked to see her in that. <laughs> yeah. And just like, it's a really good cast. And like, I'm, I mean, they have a fucking hyenas, man. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's yeah, so dope. <laughs> yeah. Like, these students need to learn, like, the more you go all in with the weird and shit and just not care about the rating, just doing the best version you can. Yeah. Like, that's what success like yeah they could have made a deadpool movie pg-13 but it wouldn't have been nearly as memorable as the one that we got yeah you know, absolutely. You gotta, that's yeah that's discussion for another time <laughs> <laughs> for sure 
for sure. And we'll see if they, you know, they they did say they're in talks to do another Deadpool, hopefully under Disney, but who knows what that's going to turn out like. This has to be rated R. Has to be rated R. Yeah. So we'd hope. So we'd hope. Um, But yeah, I I just want to say thank you, Bergen, very much for joining us. Always great chatting with you, and um, I'm going to see you real soon. Oh, yeah. We have more fun in store in the future. Oh, yes. Yes, we do. (laughs) Thank you guys for joining us on the show. Uh, really appreciate Brian for taking the time out to talk to us. And, you know, if you like the show or whatever, make sure you subscribe. I, I don't know. I, don't, I can't do these tosses very well. If you like the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast like, app. comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Just like YouTube. Yeah. Uh, make sure you... Please review us. Yeah. It put helps. some reviews on Apple Podcasts, um, Stitcher, those sort of places. It really does help us. And I just found an app that we're going to be starting to put all the podcasts from now on onto YouTube. So you'll have another way to listen to the show um, if you'd like. So I will be posting them on there. Uh, yeah, follow us. We're going to hopefully have a lot of stuff from Disney once we get on the ride. Um, more more footage and stuff to come. Uh, hopefully you guys are having an okay January. <laughs> Much love to you guys. Obviously, like we were saying before, uh, hope you get to Spend time with your loved ones. Make sure that you make sure you tell them that they're appreciated and all that stuff. Because life is short. Do the things that you love. Watch the things that you love. Enjoy the things that you love. Like, do all those things. Because you never know. You just never know. Yeah. And not to be morbid, but like, you never know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just want to say, I love you, Rachel. On the show. <laughs> and uh we will see you guys next time or you will hear us next time or see us i don't know instagram youtube twitch whatever follow us <laughs> we'll talk to you soon go forth and be nerdly Bye-bye. bye who are we don't be sure you ever heard you see it will be a drum like an infectious beat we come bleed they like in the short and long hit me because we the nerdies the, the nerdy don't be sure you ever heard you see it will be in your eardrum like an infectious beat we come bleed they like when the short and long hit me cause we the nerdlies the, the nerdlies